Hello guys and welcome to our color correction slash grading tutorial. Today we're going to teach you to how to take your shot footage and make it look more professional by applying first color correction and color grading. So let's get started with shooting your footage properly. Here's the things you need. Preferably a camera that allows you to set the aperture, white balance and ISO settings. Editing software. I'll be using Adobe After Effects, but any editing program that allows you to do color correction should do fine. Also, I'm going to use some of Red Giant's color correction plugins like Colorista 2 and Magic Bullet Looks. You don't need to use these, but they will most certainly make color correction and grading much easier. In case you have noisy footage or would like to clean video up, I also recommend Neat Video, a noise reduction plugin. Let's get started with shooting footage that will be fun and easy to color grade. Before you actually hit that record button, make sure you set your white balance, if your camera allows you to. We shoot with a Canon DSLR, and on these cameras it's as easy as holding something up completely white in front of the thing you're trying to shoot. You can also use a grey card or something simple like a piece of white paper. Then you just snap the picture, head over to the menu, select custom white balance, select your picture and press set. Now when you set your white balance to custom, your image will be properly balanced for your current light setup. Remember, every time you change your light setup, you have to reset your white balance. It only takes like 15 seconds and it's totally worth it. Next, we're always shooting with a flat picture profile. We use the CineStyle picture profile and what this allows you to do is turn down your sharpening and contrast on your camera further and allows you to correct and grade it later on in post. If you let your camera do this for you, your image probably has way too much contrast to grade it properly later on. Film Riot has done an episode on picture styles and we'll also leave a link to that in the description below. Then there's correctly exposing your footage. You want to make sure you don't overexpose or underexpose your image. In case your camera does not have enough dynamic range to capture both your shadows and your highlights properly, we'd recommend making sure your highlights are not ever exposed. It's easier later on to boost your shadows a little bit and get rid of the noise because when your image is overexposed, there's absolutely no data to work with. Lastly, in order to make sure your image is sharp, we use the digital zoom function to zoom in on its nose or eyes, focus and zoom back out. That way, you are always sure that your shot is 100% sharp and in focus. Now that you've shot all your footage properly, we're going to color correct it. Okay, let's first get the confusion out of the way between color correction and color grading. It's often referred to as the same thing. And although it both has to do with adjusting colors in your image, it does not serve the same purpose. Color correction is correcting the colors in your image. It sounds obvious, because it is. The goal of color correction is to make sure that all the shots that follow each other in a scene or in a video match up. That means the white balance has to be the same, the exposure, your greens, your blues, reds, everything. Let's look at an example. This is a shot from our most recent video, Snowly. As you can see the two shots have the same angle and are at the same location, yet they have totally different colors. The left shot is very orange and feels very warm while the shot on the right feels much colder and is more grey. No worries, that's what color correction is for. Personally, I like the warm feel of the left shot a little more, so I'm going to adjust the right shot to match the left one. Before we do that however, I'm quickly going to correct the left shot first. I'm going to add levels to the shot and make sure the blacks are as dark as possible and make sure the whites are as white as they can be before they blow out. The good thing about levels is that you can see where the colors actually start to clip. So just bring in your arrows a little to the middle and make sure that they don't clip. You can see if they clip when they pass over one of the lines. Now you can use the middle arrow and push it in any direction to get either more or less contrast. Now if you click the drop down menu you can select either of the three primary colors. Let's select red and make sure the snow isn't orange but white. To get the most professional look, you want to make sure that your whites are white and your blacks are black. Unless you are going for a very stylized grade of course. There, we messed around with the primary colors a little bit, 
and the image now seems well balanced. This is a good base that we can grade, but first let's correct the other shot to match up with this one. We're starting the same, we're pushing the shadows down a little bit and pull the highlights up a little bit. Now we'll go in the red channel and pull the red highlights quite a bit up. Also the midtones of the red should go up a little bit. Now we're going to do the exact same for the greens. Lastly, we notice that the blues pop a little bit more in the first shot, so let's push these down a little bit as well. The first shot seems to be a little bit more saturated, so let's add Colorista 2, push the saturation to about 5, and give the midtones a little bit of an orange hue. And there, now the shots are quite well balanced. We can't get them exactly right because the sunshine seems to have moved around a little bit as well, but once we're done grading it and have another shot in between, no one will notice. Although this was quite an extreme case, you want to make sure that you color correct each shot and that especially shots that follow each other are well matched and the colors aren't off. Let's take another quick look at another example. This is a clip from Scratch, an upcoming little three part web series that we've been working on for quite a while. In this scene it's supposed to be night, there is some light creeping in from the hallway but only that would not be enough to properly light our shots. In order to keep the ISO low and the shutter speed a little higher, we just lit the scene a lot more than you need for darkness. The original shot doesn't look like it's dark at all, so we simply played with the levels a little bit. That way we keep detail in our shadows, we lose some of the light as we make sure the highs and lows don't pop as much, and with a final color grade it already looks way more convincing. So, with all your footage properly balanced, it's now time for some color grading. Back to our initial two shots from Snowly. First I'm going to pre-compose the layers I've applied my color correction to. Then I'm going to apply Magic Bullet Looks, a great plugin by Red Giant Software. I highly recommend getting this one. I'm going to select the preset that the plugin came with called Bistro City. With that open, I'm going to turn off some of the corrections this preset came with. I am shutting off some of the diffusion filters and make sure there is a lot less contrast. Next, I'm going to play around with the lift gamma gain a little bit. I'd rather have a little greener shadow instead of blue, and I really want the skin tones to pop a little bit more. Speaking of pop, I'll also add a pop filter. This allows me to make the natural color contrast of the image pop a little bit more. Finally, I'm also going to add a three-way color wheel and push my highlights a little bit to the blue side. My midtones up a little bit, and the shadows a tad to the green side. I also want to make sure that I don't lose too much detail in the jacket, so I'll pull the dark tones up a little bit. I am also going to saturate my image a little bit more. About 105% should be fine. Still feels a little bit dark for a sunny snowy day, so I'm adding another levels filter and boost the midtones and highlights up a little bit. Since we did our color correction properly, we can simply copy paste our grading to the other shot and immediately we've created our second shot as well. I want to boost my saturation on this shot just a little bit more. And there we go. We are done with our first grading. Since we toyed around with the colors quite a lot, I notice a little grain on the jacket however. This is where the Need Video plugin comes in. I'll just add it at the top of our grading chain and click Options. The plugin works fully automatic if you want it to. To make sure the image does not look so faded, I'll just add an unsharp mask filter and that should look very clean. We shot this with a 50mm lens without image stabilization. I do notice a few minor shakes in the shot, not to worry. I'll just add a warp stabilizer and put the smoothness to about 2%. That is more than enough to take out the minor shakes. Let's also grade our day for night shot. I'm going to yet again pre-compose our correction and add magic bullet looks. I am then adding a very little preset I made. It's just a pop filter and a lift gamma gain filter. It makes the shadows a little greener and the highlights a little bit more orange. I feel that the mask fades away into the darkness a little bit, so we have to do something about that. I want it to pop and look a little bit more scary. Let's duplicate our layer and duplicate it on the project file as well. 
Now let's take away our color correction and our color grading. Now the mask is much more white. We'll then just make a quick little mask around the skull mask and fade it out to about 50 pixels and expand it inwards 15 pixels. Now let's quickly go through the clip and make sure the mask stays with the skull mask. You can also do this with the faces of your characters to make their skin tones pop a little bit more. This type of color grading is a little bit more advanced but you can get some great looking footage with it. All it takes is a little masking. With the masking out of the way, the skull mask looks like it pops way more than before and it looks much more intimidating. I have one more example of specific color grading. Here we have a clip from our Monday Challenge Star Wars video from some time ago. The normal clip looks pretty bland, so let's quickly turn on the color correction for it. I increase the exposure a little bit, boost the shadows a little bit to the dark side. I mean, I mean the blue side. I push the midtones a little to the orange side and made the highlights a little bit more blue. I also increased the saturation to 40. Here's what I did to the eyes. I simply masked around them individually and applied a different color grading to it to make sure that they pop way more and are a little bit more green and bright. We then apply our final color grade to them. In this case, I applied my color grade to an adjustment layer to grade all the footage at once. If I think the grade is a little bit too strong, I'll just take down the opacity of the layer a little bit. In this case, about 60% or so. Finally, I added some film grain, sharpened the image a little bit, and there's our final shot. So guys, I hope you learned something about color correction and color grading today and that with it you can really move your videos to the next level. There's really no limit to what you can do with good color correction and color grading. You can even make your image look more cool or way more warm. If you have any questions about anything or regarding this video, please leave us a private message or contact us on Facebook or Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe while you're at it. We'd really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for watching and have fun color correcting and color grading of course.